Hi, for those of you who don't know, this is kimbap. Looks like kimbap. And it's a great food in Korea. It's very common and looks like this. It's rice and you can see a bit different things in it. In the kimbap. And they roll it up and it looks a little like sushi roll, but there's no sushi in there. And it's much cheaper than sushi. It's uh, just about one dollar for this delicious thing. And uh, yeah, it's so delicious. So let me show you what it looks like when you eat it. Mmm, very good. Mmm, love it. Kimbap. Mmm. One of the great things about Korea. I love kimbap. Mmm. Want some? Kimbap. Okay, this is a kimbap. This is how you make kimbap. You get the rice and you put the rice on the kim, which is the seaweed. And you spread it out, very nice. And then you put the different things on it. And you can tell them whatever you want. Egg and kosari. And sometimes you don't want meat. I don't want meat. So I said hampego, kuseo. And to put the greens on. And then she's gonna roll it up. Oh, put something else on. Oh, some fish. She asked me if I want to fish. Yes, I do. And then she rolls it up in a little machine, a bamboo. And she put the, in the tin foil and cut it up in nice slices for me. And maybe she'll put the sauce on it if I ask her. Kind of oil. Uh, can I have a... Oh yeah? Oh, okay, okay. But they don't have the sauce here, the oil here. And I roll it up. And that's it. That's kimbap. And how much is it? One thousand, about one dollar. There's a theory that all the people in the world are connected by a series of six or less friendships. They call that the six degrees of separation, and it shows how small our world has become. Today I'll propose a new theory of connection, the two degrees of separation that exists between any two objects in the universe. For example, Kimbap and Subway. I had to go to the immigration office. When I changed jobs from one university to another, the immigration officials, in their infinite wisdom, decided that I was no longer an, a college professor, but a lowly English teacher. I had to fight for my visa. I left right after my one o'clock class without even having lunch. And it's a good thing, because it took four hours, hours of traveling on the subway, of waiting, of arguing, of making phone calls, before finally the immigration official, in his infinite wisdom, came out and said, Okay, Professor Lev, here is your E1 stamp. Yes, I did it. I was so happy. I went back to the subway station, bought some kimbap, sat down on the seat. Ah, warm seat. E1 visa and kimbap. Life in Korea is good, sometimes. I sit back and start enjoying my kimbap and my favorite sport, watching Korean people. But then I see a well-dressed older man. He's staring at me. Why is he staring at me? Oh, maybe I shouldn't be eating a kimbap on the subway. But I'm tired and I'm hungry. I'm going to eat the kimbap. I look over and he's still staring at me. I'm tired of people staring at me in Korea. Staring at me because I eat food in the wrong place or at the wrong time or because I have a big nose, 
or because I'm very handsome, or because they think maybe I'm a playboy English teacher, or because they see me as a representative of Western cultural imperialism. I'm tired of being stared at in Korea. I thrust the kimba out into the aisle, challenging the man. What? You want my kimba? The old man glares back at me, and then surprisingly, suddenly, smiles, reaches across, grabs a slice, and says, Thank you. Yes. Oh, I'm shocked. That's not the way Korean people normally act. I look up again, and he's still staring, and really, what can I do but offer him another slice, which he accepts? It's all very interesting, but after all, he's eating my lunch. I decide I'm not going to look up anymore. I take out my subway map and open it up and see how many more stops before I have to make a transfer. When I feel tapping on my knee, it's him. I look up and he says, If you sit next to me, uh, maybe I can help. Oh no, uh, that's okay, really. I'm fine, I don't need any help. Thanks, but no thanks. And then I hear a voice from up above. It's my great Aunt Anna. May she rest in peace. Frank, Frank, give people a chance. They can surprise you. Oh, hi, Aunt Anna. Yeah, I know about that, but you know, today I'm Frank. Okay, okay, Aunt Anna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, maybe he's staring at me because he's interested in me. And maybe he just wants to be friends. I get up, walk across the aisle. And sit down next to him. So, uh, what do you do? I am a poet. Oh, really? It's not every day you meet a poet on the subway. So, are you famous? Unfortunately not. Hey, don't worry. Maybe after you die, your poems will be popular. I write a poetry to feed the hunger in my soul. And as he says, he reaches over and grabs another slice of my kimbap. Well, listen, um, I'd like to see your poem. Can you write a poem for me? Unfortunately, it seems that unfortunately was his word of the day. Unfortunately, I write poems only in Korean, not in English. Oh, that's all right. I want to see. Just write. And I give him the pad, and he starts writing. Five stops, four stops, three stops. He gives it back to me. Wow! Looks like a real poem. What does it mean? I am a poet, not a translator. Ask one of your Korean friends. Okay, fair enough. I take the pad, and I start writing. Three stops, two stops, one stop. I show it to him. What is this? Here, let me read it for you. Kimbap and Subway. Both cylindrical, both going somewhere. Kimbap to my stomach. Subway to my station. I eat the kimbap on the subway. An interesting man watches. I give. Kimbap fills his stomach. He gives, poem explodes in my mind. Whoa, did you just write this poem? Is it poem? Yes, sir. It's bad poem. Yeah, I just wrote it. Whoa, you Western people are so, so spontaneous? Yes, spontaneous. It took me two months to write my poem. And you wrote yours in just two stops, very quickly. But you said it's a bad poem. It's a very bad poem. But even a bad poem written in two stops on the subway is good art. I feel the train start to slow down. And as I stand up, I realize that beneath the surface of my world, there's another more real world. It's a world of possibility. 
It's a world inhabited by kind, angry-looking old men, and with good art disguised as bad poetry. It's a world of wonder. And it's all possible if we just learn to step around our limitations and into a place where there's no separation between any of us because we're looking at the world with our hearts and not our heads. I walk out through the subway doors, turn around, and we both wave goodbye. Still hungry!